mediation is really a magical process because first of all the mediator is an outsider that always helps and second I'm truly impartial unlike a therapist or a, a counselor or a care manager um, they usually consider the elder as their client so it can really help to have somebody who is neutral and tries to understand where everybody is coming from without any judgment. There are so many families that are facing tensions when the parents are getting older and there's disagreements between the parents and the adult children and sometimes among the adult children about what should happen to mom or dad or the estate. The people who come to me usually are at that point where they think anything they suggest the other party's not going to want. It can really be anything from we want mom or dad to stop driving to we want mom or dad to move to assisted living or accept uh, caregivers in their home. Uh, it could also be about whether or not to sell the family home or keep it in the family and if so who should get it uh, or the family business. Elder mediation can also involve other parties. I've had a case where a home care agency contacted me because they often get stuck in the middle between what the elder wants and what the adult child who pays the bills wants. But it could also be in senior communities if there's tensions among the residents. I could help better than somebody who's on staff there because people don't really want to air their dirty laundry and front of somebody who, with whom they have ongoing relationships. I have worked with families anywhere from one session to six sessions. Oftentimes two sessions are ideal. My mediation sessions usually take three to four hours. I think a whole day of highly emotional conversations is just too exhausting to make reasonable decisions at the end. In the first part of the joint session, each party talks to me and tells me where they're coming from and what they're hoping to achieve. And then um, once I reflected back what I heard them say and, and they already feel a little calmer or more confident, then I can uh, help them talk to each other. We usually jointly make a topics list and then pick one topic that everybody agrees should be discussed to start with and then focus on that topic and then I help people talk to each other. That's the second phase. And then once they've really heard and understood where each of them is coming from on that particular topic, then we can start brainstorming possible solutions. But only then. It makes no sense to discuss possible solutions at the beginning when people haven't really heard and understood why each person wants whatever it is that they want. I create an atmosphere where people feel safe to show their emotions, but also are able to show their emotions in a way that's safe to the other parties. So no yelling or name calling or anything like that, but still, you know, speaking your honest truth. And if one party changes the way they communicate, it has a ripple effect and changes the whole family dynamic.